Hello, I am Sam Brown reporting to you from Greensboro, North Carolina at the Joseph S. Corey Convention Center, right outside the Guilford Ballroom. We are here for the 2019 winter meeting of the Board of Bishops of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. I have here with me, I am honored to be with the immediate past and current President of the Board of Bishops, the Right Reverend W. Darren Moore, presiding prelate of the Mid-Atlantic Episcopal District, and the Right Reverend Seth Larte, presiding prelate of the Alabama, Florida Episcopal District. In a centuries-old tradition in our church, we have just witnessed the peaceful transition of power from one person to the next. Bishop Moore is here with us. Bishop Moore, would you please tell our viewers uh, what are some of the things that you experienced over this last six months as president of the Board of Bishops that informed some of the platforms that you lifted up in your closing remarks? Well, first of all, Reverend Brown, thank you for this opportunity to bring me to stand alongside of my colleague as we talk about the life of our church. As you've already indicated, the presidency of the Board of Bishops rotates every six months. But during those six months, the president is the titular head of the church. And every issue that impacts the life of the church uh, comes through the president of the Board of Bishops. And so it is an enormous responsibility, and I'm sure Bishop Latte will tell you, you really feel the weight of the responsibility of the church upon your shoulders. Uh, I celebrate the fact that we are indeed the Freedom Church. I am AME Zion by birth and by choice, a sixth generation Zionite. And so it is both humbling and honoring to me that I had an opportunity to serve these past six months as president. The Board of Bishops does not operate unilaterally. We operate as a team. So even though the president takes the lead in presenting some items, it is indeed the action of the board that gives it its legitimacy. And so the board of bishops uh, did something historic at our meeting here in Greensboro. We visited the International Civil Rights Center and Museum which is the site of the original sit-ins at the Woolworth lunch counter that was led by the Greensboro Four that began a movement of sit-ins to protest Jim Crow laws across the South. And your board of bishops went as an entire group for the first time to that uh, center and museum and was given a private tour by the uh, chief executive officer, Mr. John Swain. And it was just a moving experience. And we also left a financial contribution there. We have issued as the AME Zion Board of Bishops three statements at this meeting. The first one is to acknowledge that the year 2019 represents the 400th year since the first Africans were brought to the United States and enslaved at Point Comfort near Jamestown, Virginia. Bishop Larte speaks so eloquently about this 400th year anniversary of that historic event and the way in which Africans in America and African Americans have overcome enormous obstacles to reach a place where we demand equality and to be fully valued as citizens. We know we've come a mighty long way, but yet there are so many struggles that continue, be it the new Jim Crowism with the mass incarceration or economic disparity, health uh, care concerns, educational uh, issues. We have a lot of struggles that we are dealing with, and one of the major ones is voter suppression and intimidation. Our people need to be mobilized to vote yes on the presidential election years, but also in local municipalities. At every level, we need to energize our congregations and our communities to get out to vote. The second um, resolution spoke to the ongoing plight of the Palestinians. Many of our people are inadequately educated 
on the reality of the struggle that the Palestinian people face, many of whom are Christians. Erroneously, people tend to believe that the Palestinians are Muslim. And while there are significant number of Muslims, there are significant number of Christians. And the fact that there are a small number of those who advocate violence, the fact of the matter is the majority of Palestinians want exactly what the majority of Israel wants and what the majority of America wants, and that is a safe, secure Middle East with two independent states living side by side without the threat of terrorism or violence. And so we affirm strongly the right of Jewish people to the state of Israel being secure, that they should not fear rockets being dropped into the streets of Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, and we support a free and independent Palestine. The Board of Bishops made a statement that declared that justice must be consistent. If we say black lives matter, we must also say Palestinian lives matter. And what's happening now with the illegal occupation of much of Palestinian lands, we feel it is critical that the AME Zion Church as the Freedom Church speaks out against injustice because injustice anywhere is uh, injustice there is injustice everywhere. Uh, and then finally, we issued a resolution calling on our church to join with our brothers and sisters in the United Methodist Church in prayer for healing and clarity as the United Methodist Church is speaking this very, uh, is meeting this very week uh, in a special session of their general conference to decide on the way forward with regard to the issues of uh, human sexuality, the ordination of gay individuals and uh, the sanctioning of same-sex marriages. It is a very sensitive issue that not only the United Methodists wrestle with, all churches wrestle with. The Amy Zion Church is not immune from this very issue ourselves. And so we're praying with our brothers and sisters in the United Methodist Church as they face these very real concerns. Thank you so much, Bishop thank Moore. You. Thank you. Bishop Larte, thank you for being with us today. Would you uh, tell our viewers who were not able to be with us here, what were some of the things in your experiences uh, leading up to this moment that informed the platform that you laid out for us? Well, let me first uh, express thanks for the opportunity to share with uh, our Amy Zion family what led to some of the positions that we have taken. Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, I acknowledge and thank our immediate past president. And one of the things that we can all be assured of is that there is not going to be a sort of uh, putting aside of those things that Bishop Moore began to talk about. There will be a continuation of those things he mentioned, the 400 years issue. We're going to continue to work on that. Praying for our brothers and sisters in the United Methodist Church, we're going to continue that. The need to lift up uh, the Palestinian issue, we're going to continue to do that. So we just want people to realize that we no longer have a disjointed kind of uh, uh, leadership where when one person is finished, a new one comes in and throw everything out and we start anew. We cannot do that. Uh, life continues, and so we need to continue the, the legacy, the leadership, the agenda, so that we come to a place that it makes an impact, it makes a difference. But also, as we have come to this place at this time, we are also concerned about some things. Uh, for example, uh, one of the things that we are concerned about is uh, the expansion of uh, the episcopacy. Uh, uh, we have 12 bishops. Uh, notwithstanding, the work is expanding, particularly overseas. And if we are going to be effective in the supervision of these places, we will need to look at the possibilities 
of expanding. And so we have uh, put together a commission that will look at a resolution that will be brought to the General Conference to look at the feasibility. It could be something that could happen in 2020, something that could happen another 20 years from now, but the time has come for us to really, really seriously begin to look at the issue of expansion of the Episcopacy. That was one thing we talked about. The other area that we talked about has to do with our social impact. And what we are talking about here is that uh, no longer can the church be just on the corner. Uh, we, yes, we talk about Black Lives Matter. And if Black ma Lives Matter, which it does, then why are we constantly killing each other? And so we want to have a connectional wide town hall meeting to look at homicide in the black community, to look at how many of our black churches are declining. And apparently, people are forgetting that it was the grace of God that led to many, many of the legislations, as Bishop Moore pointed out, constitutionally, that even gave rise to blacks being citizens in this country. So why are you turning away from the church today? The struggle is not over. The struggle continues. He talks about civic engagement, voter registration, voter education, voter participation. Those are things that we must continue to, to deal with. And so we're going to continue those kinds of uh, conversations and agendas. We also shared something quite interesting, and that is economics. Uh, black America controls about $1 trillion when it comes to economics. But yet, if you look at our communities, you look at our businesses, you look at what's happening, you soon discover that somehow we need a system in place. And we believe that the church can make a vital difference. And so those are some of the kinds of things that we're dealing with. Uh, as you well know, in the Amos Iron Church, we are accustomed to assessment. And why some people have an issue with assessment, I need to say that you need to understand that the fathers and the mothers decided to be free. And you cannot claim to be free and still eat from the master's table. It was because of such that they put into place their little meager system and it has worked for 222 years. The problem with assessment is not so much the assessment. I think it's a problem of helping people understand what happens to what we do. We do a lot of things. I tell people sometimes I'm standing here as a three-dimensional ex exhibit of what happens to assessment. Your assessment, your general claims help me to come to this country, to go to school, and look what you have invested in. Today I am a bishop in the church. I stand here as president of the Board of Bishops because of your investment. And if it was done for me, it can be done for somebody else. We just need to reprioritize and realize that we cannot put our investment in only things because those things we will leave one of these days. The Bible tells us naked we came, naked we're going to leave. We need to start investing in people, in our educational system, in our churches, and in the life of our children. And so this is where we are going over the next uh, six months. But strategically what we are doing, many of the things that we're proposing, they will become resolutions to come to the General Conference so that the wider church can look at it, talk about it, and determine where we go with it from there. Thank you so much, Bishop Larte. Again, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time, as we know that you are uh, busy still uh, in the midst of hearing reports and handling business as you all lead our church in the interim of the General Conference. So we at the Communications Department do not take this lightly. Thank you. To our viewers, you may view all of the statements uh, that were released to us at our websites, amez.org or soznews.org. Thank you so very much. We look forward to being with you again.